Hey, okay, so I know that I said that I was going to do longer films and we weren't going to do shorter films for a while, but <laughs> I found the earliest surviving gangster film and it's based on actual events. So I get a pass on this one. <laughs> All right, so the title of the film is The Black Hand. The full title is The Black Hand, True Story of a Recent Occurrence in the Italian Quarter of New York. Um, I will try to find information on these actual events. If you find anything, please put it in the comments. Because um, of course I'm interested. I love history. <laughs> Any bit of information, you know, like those little tidbits that are forgotten in history. <laughs> I love learning about them. So it was released in 1906, and the, the film is 11 minutes long. Uh, it's directed by Wallace McCutcheon. I hope I'm saying his name right. I will, of course, put in the description his information so that you can read up on him, because I don't think we've looked at a film of his at all. Um, what little information I did look up on him, he's from New York, so... Now, the plot of the film is that there are two Italian gangsters that decide to blackmail this butcher, that if they don't receive this ransom, they're going to kidnap his daughter and sabotage his, um, his shop in some way. And um, I, I don't remember what, I, because of the note, it's so badly written when you, re when you watch, it's like, and, um, it looks more like a, a, a pirate wrote it, you know, like the old pirate font. And, uh, when you look at it, so, um, it, it was kind of hard to read when I was, when I was watching. Well, of course the butcher can't get the sum of money. And so the little girl is kidnapped and the butcher calls the policeman and the detectives. Now, the interesting thing is that, of course, at the beginning of the film, it has the title card that says that this was based on actual events. And then you also see a title card that mentions that what we're about to see is how the detectives actually did this. So what we're seeing is um, a production of actual <laughs> I don't know how else to explain. I mean, it's like, um, anyway, I, th I think you get the idea. <laughs> I'm not going to spend time actually trying to explain. But, um, actors portraying actual events. That's what I'm trying to say. My brain is glitching. So, but anyway, <laughs> be patient with me. Now, I know that some people will probably get upset about the fact that there are particular scenes where the girl is kind of, the little girl is roughed up a little bit. So I watched a couple times. And if you watch carefully, of course, for the audience, these gangsters have to look like they're tough and, and everything else. And, but they're very delicate with her, actually. So she's fine. She's absolutely fine. I mean, yeah, they look like they're strangling her and at one point, you know, and the, the guy has her, his hands around her neck and everything. But to be honest, if you actually watch, he's not really hurting her. And um, the, the way that they um, are handling her is, is delicate, but they still have to make the audience believe that they are tough criminals and, and, and everything else. So no, she's fine. In fact, at one point they have this gal who's working with her, I mean with them. And so she comes in and out of the scene every once in a while. I'm not quite sure what her part is in it. But anyway, she, she comes in and out every once in a while. And when the little girl is first brought into their hideout, 
she's placed on the mat, and basically her, she, she can't leave the mattress. There's a mattress on the floor, and, you know, she's basically told, you stay on the mattress. And the gal, it's supposed to look like she's roughing up the girl, I mean, basically. And, but she's roughing up the blankets. <laughs> so, no, the, the little girl is perfectly fine. They're, they aren't actually hurting her in any way. It's just, um, it's acting. <laughs> The girl is perfectly safe. Um, Cause yeah, it bothered me a little bit when I was watching, but then you, you watch again and possibly even a third time and you realize that she's perfectly okay. <laughs> now, one scene in here, absolutely, oh, I loved this scene. So there's a, the scene where she's getting kidnapped off the street where the little girl is getting kidnapped. There's like a couple minutes of just street time. I mean, you see these people on, so it's supposed to look candid, I guess. Well, it really did. But the problem is, is that these people are trying to stay out of shot. It's like, cause you see this woman, I mean, she's like aristocrat high society and she walks into view and she kind of looks over her shoulder and then walks back. I mean, you see these people and they're trying so hard not to be in. The only other time that we see these in these films that I critique are um, like the document, the, the documentary type films, not in actual directed films. So, there, in fact, there's one boy. They must have been near a hotel because there's this boy. He's dressed in like a bellhop, traditional bellhop outfit. And he's like, he starts to walk and then he stops. And and it's like, he, he's taking direction, but he doesn't know what to do. And um, I, <laughs> I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed watching that scene. And... Um, there was another part where the detectives came into the shop. It was before the bad guys were going to come in and take the ransom, you know, try and get ransom from the, the butcher. So they come into the shop. Now you see this, um, this stand in freezer. And of course, you know that it's like a prop. That's like a stage production prop. And, um... The detective, you know, they're trying to figure out where the detect detectives can hide. Well, they decide to go into this stand-in freezer. The way that they acted it out was so well done. I, you know, <laughs> it's like, it, it, for, yeah, I mean, it was believable. It was absolutely believable. And, um, because you knew that that thing wasn't actually cold inside but they made you believe it was <laughs> and um because they run out you know they're, they're knocking on the window and everything and they run out and they're jumping around you know trying and going like this and trying to warm up their fingers and everything and then they decide well the only other place we can go is in there so they go back in there and <laughs> it, it was I, I liked that scene very much and um but so anyway um the the other act I mean the <laughs> the gangsters I mean it, it, they acted tough there was <laughs> Quite, you know, it's a kind of the stereotype thing where actors, I mean, gangsters like drink and play cards and everything. So it was more like a, um, a Western kind of a thing. <laughs> I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it at all because it's 1906, you know. And um, for the for the earliest surviving gangster film, I, you know, I don't mind. So I will try and find more on this particular event, see if I can find anything. If you can find anything, again, post it in comments. I, I would love to know what actually happened. And um, I will, of course, put links to uh, Wallace McCutcheon and, um, and for the film itself. 
Uh, this was released in 1906. It's 11 minutes long. The earliest surviving gangster film. It is titled The Black Hand.